parasymmetry for hypersurfaces. And it's run, it's currently in Princeton in its advanced study. And this is the first of six lectures. Yeah, th uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me here. It's really exciting to get to visit Israel. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about homological mirror symmetry for uh, hypersurfaces. The, the main aim is to describe the proof of homological mirror symmetry for Kalabi Yau hypersurfaces. Um, so let me start by stating the main theorem I'm going to try to get describe the proof of. So So mirror symmetry Um, is about pairs of varieties, pairs of Kähler varieties, so that the symplectic invariants of one are equivalent to algebraic invariants of the other and vice versa. So let me start by saying the variety and the symplectic invariants we'll look at. So we're going to look at degree n hypersurface in CPN minus 1. This is the degree that makes it Calabi Yau. Um, the symplectic form we'll look at is the restriction of the Fubini Studi symplectic form to this guy. And in fact, I mean, all degree, smooth degree n hypersurfaces with the restriction of the Fubini Studi symplectic form are symplectomorphic. So, in some sense, it doesn't matter that I'm taking this particular Fermat hypersurface from the point of view of symplectic geometry. Um, So we're going to look at, consider a divisor inside here. Which is just given by the union of the coordinate hyperplanes. So it has n irreducible components, which are the, the n hyperplanes. And uh, maybe I shouldn't go all the way down here. Um, so the coefficient field that we're going to work over and define our categories over is a formal uh, Laurent series field in one variable. So to the, this data of xn together with this divisor d, we're going to associate uh, an invariant called the relative Fukaya category, Fukaya category of Xn relative to D. Um, and that's going to be an A infinity category linear over this field. Um, so the rest of this talk, after I've stated the result, will be about, about defining this category and 
some of its properties. So the other side of mirror symmetry is about algebraic invariance. It's called the B model. So the varieties we're going to look at So we're going to be working over another formal Laurent series field. I'll write it in a different variable to indicate they're not identified, these two, as we'll see later. And to start off with, we look at the variety defined by this equation in projective space over this field. Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, so, so you can think of spec of KB as the, the formal punctured disk. So you can think about this variety as living over the formal punctured disk. So you can think about it as kind of being a, a family of varieties over the formal punctured disk. It's parameterized by this variable Q. And of course, when you know, if you tried to fill in q equals zero in this family, you would forget this term and you would get some very singular variety. It's just the union of hyperplanes. But this is not quite the var variety we're going to look at. So we have a group, Gn tilde, that looks like this. And this acts on projective space, where it acts by multiplying the coordinates by nth roots of unity, but the diagonal action on projective space is trivial. But this doesn't preserve this equation. It preserves these monomials, but not this one. So there's a sum map to Z mod n, and we define Gn to be the kernel of this map, and this one does act on Yn tilde. So the, so what we are going to consider is uh, Yn, which is the quotient of Yn tilde by this group action Gn. So to this algebraic data, we associate uh, an A infinity category. Actually, it's DG. Uh, 
uh, and this is the bounded derived category of coherent sheaves on Yn, which is just the same thing as Gn, bounded derived category of Gn equivariant coherent sheaves on Yn tilde. So since this variety is defined over this field Kb, this is a Kb linear category. So usually you think about it as a triangulated category, but there's an underlying differential graded category. So that's the same as thing as an A infinity category like in the last talk, except you only have mu1 and mu2. All the higher ones vanish. Um, so the theorem that first there exists an isomorphism Ka to Kb. So so it looks like that. It sends Q to some power series in little Q whose leading order term turns out to be 1. Second, there's an A infinity quasi equivalence. Of Ka linear A infinity categories. between this symplectic category, this relative Fukaya category we defined, and this bounded derived category of coherent sheets. D pi is something that I think Nati will talk about in his talk. So given any A infinity category, there's a way of enlarging it by taking all cones and, and secondly, uh, the pi means you also add in all formal direct sum ends. So, okay. No, and and. No, 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 no. The DP of. This is an A infinity category. Yeah. It is same thing. On level of DG category, this what you know, you make it pre triangulated. But there is not an obvious construction yeah. for infinity. It's not very really different. That's right. So, yeah, and so in the last talk, you know, we saw that there's this co uh, given an A infinity category, you can take its cohomology and you get an honest category. So, in particular, you could do this and you would get an equivalence of triangulated categories between these two sides. When you but say it exists, will you construct it or you put it in existence? I will construct it, yeah. Um, in, in a... I'm, what I'm, 
Okay, so some there are there are there's a confusion in notation. The, what I mean by this one is the a infinity category underlying the split closed triangulated category without taking h zero. Yeah. Could you characterize these fields <coughs> in terms of Yes. So the question is, could you characterize the equivalence as unique as the triangles? Uh, not an, not natural properties, no. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, okay. So I should have said something about this psi here. Sorry. So this is a Ka linear category. This is a KB linear category. So in order to compare. compare them, you need to identify the coefficient field in some way. And that identification is unique. So geometrically, uh, you know, I was saying how you can think about this as a family of varieties over a formal punctured disk. Similarly, since these are categories linear over its formal Lorentz series, you can think about them as sort of a family of categories parameterized by the formal punctured disk. And in order for the categories at the corresponding points in the formal punctured disk to match up, you need to identify the punctured disks in the right way. Yeah, but this, so, so in particular, this, this map is unique. Is also in some sense general case? No. Uh, well, this is a, a, a versal deformation of, I, I mean, this. Ah, versal deformation of, the, of, of D. In some sense, yes. Sorry. Oh, sorry. You're right. So, if I if I took, yeah, yeah, preserving. So I, I, maybe maybe what I just said was a little bit subtle. Uh, if if okay, in the case in the case of great interest, which is n equals five, where x is the quintic threefold. This yn is the mirror uh, variety. If you take a crepent resolution of this orbifold, you get some smooth variety, and there this certainly is a versal deformation of varieties. OK, so. So this is the statement of the theorem that the rest of my talks will be about proving. Um, so let me start by introducing what this, uh, this category is and start saying how we're going to get a handle on computing it. So
So suppose we've got some. That's correct. It's going to mention two for Yes. Um, to be honest, um, to be honest, because the divisor I will look at is normal crossings, um, I really do want to use the fact that it lives in an algebraic space. Yeah. But, so, maybe I should say, that this, this relative Fukai category I'm going to talk about is very good for computing, has very nice properties. But this category really does depend on the choice of divisor. And this is something that's not completely proven, but this statement should imply that a similar statement for the absolute Fukaya category of the symplectic manifold X, Xn. So. Lambda is the coefficient field of, uh, of this Fukaya category, which is something like the uh, algebraic closure of yeah. formal Laurent series. So, so this, this would be a statement where this kind of would incorporate all Lagrangians in this symplectic manifold and would be a very complicated thing. This is a simpler thing, but in some sense it, I mean, this thing is not completely defined in the literature yet, so. But there is a statement about something that is, should be a more canonical symplectic invariant than this one is. Okay. So, so suppose we have some compact symplectic manifold and some divisor Poincaré dual to the symplectic class on this manifold. So we have some exact symplectic manifold in the complement So we can define uh, the exact Fukaya category exactly as in Cedric's last talk. That's correct. Does this category depend on the choice of this? It can, yes. So So the objects are exact Lagrangians in the complement of D. Do you require them to be compact? Compact, yes. We're taking this to be a, a C linear infinity category, so it's Morphism spaces are the complex vector spaces generated by intersection points, up to these technicalities Cedric mentioned.
and the structure maps count uh, holomorphic disks mapping into x minus d. Sorry, by the, time, by the way, what time did I start? 11.21. Okay, thank you. Sorry? Okay. <laughs> Now, Um, N is the number of components we divide it? Yes. <coughs> so our coefficient ring is a formal power series ring with one variable for each component of the divisor. It has the same objects as the Fukaya category of the complement of D. So let's call this ring R. The morphism spaces have the same generators. They're just an R module rather than a complex vector space. What's different is that the structure maps count holomorphic disks mapping into X with boundary on these Lagrangians. So they don't have to lie in X minus D. And the reason we had to introduce this co new coefficient ring R is that we are forced to count our holomorphic disks with a monomial recording how the disk intersects the divisors um, because otherwise there would be infinitely many um, disks, well, there are infinitely many disks like this. So you can't just count all of them and turn it into a complex number. You would need some sort of convergence. So you put that in by you know, allowing infinite sums as, as long as the powers of Q go higher and higher. Does okay. Have to work 
yes, this is, this is harder to define than the exact Fukaya category. Isn't it just subcategory? Because only object seems to depend on D. All the rest doesn't depend on D. Am I right? Well, the sections. No, this. Well, this depends. These structure maps? You're in the section with D. D is, the, D is union DI. No, R is no, it's formally dependent. Yes, so, so the correct thing is to say that that is that this that's right that so. So if you, if you set all of the, R, the, the QI equal to zero, then all of these terms are just going to be equal to zero, that was banish, except, except the ones where all of these intersection numbers are zero, which, which is the same as lying in the complement of D. So we're going to try to understand if we have some branched cover. Branching on D? Yes. Branched along the divisors only. We want to know how, what this means about the relationship between these relative Fukaya categories. Because we want to consider the example. Yes, EI maps to DI and there's some branching around it. Okay, so maybe I should. So we have a branched cover like this. Sorry, yes. Thank you. Okay. 
So this is going to be crucial for understanding the Fukaya category of this guy relative to this <coughs> divisor. It's a map, it's a branched cover, and the branching happens exactly along the components of this divisor, as branching of degree n along those components. And of course, down here, we have something that is much simpler to understand than up here. This is just projective space with a bunch of hyperplanes cut out of it. So our strategy for computing this guy will be in the rest of this talk to explain how these two relative Fukaya categories should be related, and then in the following talk, explain how to com make explicit computations in the relative Fukaya category down here. OK. So Way, kind of, to translate what you're doing now to B side. Yes. Okay. Yes, there is. Yes. The, this, this passage between XN and the, and the thing it's covering is mirror to passage between dbco of YN tilde and dbco of YN, more or less. Um, so the way to go between these, the Fukaya category of the base and of its cover has to do with certain extra gradings we'll put on the category. So Cedric explained how you can put a Z grading on the Fukaya category. So, okay, mentioned that you can do this. Sorry, let me see what order I put this in. So we're going to consider Lagrangians in X minus D equipped with a grading, where a grading means actually to avoid writing X minus D many times, let me just say and some exact manifold. So any time you have a Lagrangian embedding, or indeed immersion, it comes with a lift to the Lagrangian Grassmannian. So that's the fiber bundle of all Lagrangian subspaces of the tangent space to M. And this lift is given by the tangent space to L. We're going to look at the universal abelian cover of this Lagrangian Grassmannian. And the lift to there is called a grading. So strictly speaking, we're defining a new category where objects are compact, exact Lagrangians equipped with a lift like this.
So it's a fiber bundle over M whose fiber over a point is the space of Lagrangian subspaces of the tangent bundle to M at that point. So it looks like this. So we have fiber over M, it's this Lagrangian, Grassmannian of a symplectic vector space. And that's the fiber of this fiber bundle. So this gives us an exact sequence like this. And it's I guess, uh, well known that the first homology of the Lagrangian Grassmannian of a symplectic vector space is isomorphic to Z. So we have. So now we can, yes? Uh, this is the, the fiber of this fiber bundle over. So when we equip these uh, Lagrangians with these lifts to the universal abelian cover of this guy, that allows us to define associated to each intersection between Lagrangians a certain degree in H1 of the Lagrangian Grassmannian, the covering group of this universal abelian cover. H1 of GM. So you just take the difference between uh, lifts of two Lagrangians. That's correct, yes. You, you have, so L0 and L1 come with a lift to this universal abelian cover, and these lifts. So first of all, they may not intersect, so you might have to translate by some element of the covering group. And then you might have to twist around to make the lifts match up. But you, you, can, make, you can get a well-defined element of the covering group uh, from the intersection between these two Lagrangians. And this allows us to turn this Fukaya category into an, a category that is graded in this abelian group, where what that means is Most excited reaction I've ever had. To, <laughs> so. so, so in Cedric's talk, he said, 
mu d has degree 2 minus d. And we, ju we just had this z graded category. Now, our grading is in. That's correct. It will be in all the cases we're looking at. So, so what it means that it has degree 2 minus d is that its degree with respect to this, this grading is the image of 2 minus d under this map. So, I guess the part having to do with the, the Maslow index may still be a bit mysterious, but, you know, because this is exact, the fact these guys have degree 2 minus d, which is in the image of z, means their degree with respect to the reduction to the h1 of m grading is zero. And what that's saying is that any time you have an A-infinity structure map, it's counting some disks, and the boundary of the disk is null homologous, because there's a disk there. Sorry, yes? It means... The question was, it means each morphism space comes with a decomposition into a direct sum decomposition. into some ends indexed by the elements of the group, where the, the y sum end is generated by all intersection points whose degree is equal to y in here. Yes. Okay, so So, yes, question? Ah, uh, this window is open? Ah, uh, you're right. Okay. Well, is this also open? Or? Oh. Okay, thank you. So we're trying to understand how these relative Fukaya categories behave under branched covers. And we're starting by understanding the, just how the thing in the complement of the divisor behaves first. So suppose we have an unbranched cover of exact symplectic manifolds 
that looks like this. It induces a morphism of grading uh, of these abelian groups in which our categories are graded just by the push forward. So we have an isomorph, well, a bijection between the objects of the Fukaya category of M and the objects of the Fukaya category of N because So an object of the Fukaya category of M is a Lagrangian together with a lift to the universal abelian cover of the Lagrangian Grassmannian. N is just some cover of M, so they have the same universal cover and similarly the same uh, universal abelian cover of the Lagrangian Grassmannian. In particular, you have... Yes. It's okay. Yes. Oh, did I not? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So there are, there are issues having to do with whether you can allow immersed versus embedded Lagrangians in your Fukaya category, but let's ignore them for the moment. Um, so we have the same objects in our two categories but the morphism spaces are different. Well, this, so this, this, this factors through the universal abelian cover of N. So given a lift like this, It's a, sure. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now, But now the difference between the categories comes. If you have two Lagrangians uh, 
downstairs in N. Their home space in our category is generated by their intersection points. But not all of the intersection points will lift upstairs to this category. What we have instead is we have this decomposition into graded pieces in here. And we do have an isomorphism the graded piece corresponding to some y in h1 of gn with the graded piece corresponding to the image of that y under this, uh, under this map here. OK? The point is that only the intersection points whose grading lies in the image of this map will actually lift upstairs to M. Does this make sense, or are there any questions? So I want to formalize this a little bit. Maybe I should just in introduce terminology. So a grading datum consists of an abelian group, Y, together with a map from the integers into y, and also a map to z mod 2 that looks like this. This will only be for the purpose of defining signs in all of our algebraic operations. So I'll refer to all of this data together by a boldface G for grading datum. I shouldn't have called those. Okay, 
So we have this notion of a G graded A infinity category. That's exactly what I said before. Sorry. This. Yeah. And you have some formula for the signs that appear in the A infinity relations. And those come from this map here. Yes? Not necessarily, no. Um, yes, but this would be, uh, this would sort of be a case where the Lagrangian upstairs, when you push it forward downstairs, it ends up Multiply, multiply covering the Lagrangian downstairs. So it's not a case that we want to look at. But in that case, yes, that would happen. Is there a reversal of M and N in this diagram down here? Oh, did I? <laughs> oh, I see. OK, uh, what's the minimal? I think you want to still have an N there and everywhere else it's right. Just, just here. Sorry about that. Oh. So, I see. Uh, let me think about that. Um, sh sure. Uh, yes. Uh, have, okay. Three minutes. So if we have a morphism of abelian groups like this that also has to commute with these maps to Z mod 2. then we can define a category that I call P upper star C. It's the one with the same objects The relationship between the morphism spaces is 
as it was over there. And this identification between graded pieces of the morphism spaces allows us to define A infinity maps on these guys by pulling back from the A infinity maps here. So the final result is is that we have this relationship between our Fukaya categories. The content of this is this stuff about how the morphism, how the intersection points between Lagrangians lift that I said over there, and also the fact that any holomorphic disk downstairs in N has to lift upstairs to M because disks are contractible. Okay, so I'll stop there. Thank you.